Hello my friends and welcome back to The Witcher 3. In yesterday's video we did some side questing and most importantly we played Gwent with Shawnee and, and had a nice little conversation with her. It was very lovely. I liked that little follow up. So in today's video we're going to eventually get to the quest Enchanting Quality Has Its Price. But first we're going to do some exploration uh, right over here by this isolated hut that at first confused me yesterday. Oh my gosh. What is going on? Well, you look like not nice people. Morin Village. Oh, you're not nice people. Kill them. Kill this guy first. There we go. Whoa. Did he just say shock cut? Are you giving yourself instructions? I mean, I do that too, but you know. I think there's an arrow arbalist behind me. Oh, oh, oh. Get him from the left. Ah. Okay, let's get this guy. He's almost dead. Come on, all together. Okay. There is not an arbalist over there. Oops. Alright, just the guy with the shield left. I one-shotted your boss yesterday. That was kind of awesome. But you apparently are less susceptible to mind control. Oh, I... Dang it. I gotta read something. Don't forget, Jessica. Yay, it made it sight though. The house is still on fire. Did they fix that, I hope? Oh, they do. <laughs> Area liberated, its populace has returned. Yay. What is that over there? Um, okay, so there was something that I picked up book-wise, so let me attempt to find it. Here we go. Orders for cleanup unit. To Eric von Kaiden Kidden. I shall be brief, as the matter is simple. The issue of Christer Hagen must be resolved in a manner both complete and final. The village that has served as his safe haven for the Imperial Snitch must be burnt to the ground. The surrounding fields sown with salt drive the women and children off. Hang the men, M. Well. Glad I killed all you guys. You're horrible. Right, let's attempt to find the loot. Nope, this way. There we go. And there's a merchant here. Lovely. Do you have anything, sir? Yeah, welcome to my workshop. Sturdy craftsmanship at a reasonable price. Nothing on offer that I want to purchase, but he did have enough money to sell some stuff. So what is this question mark up here? Oh, hidden treasure. Ooh. Bloody letter and encrusted key. Field agent 12E32 alias Beanpole ex executing order 122245 according to procedure 46D to be delivered personally to the commander of intelligence cell cardinal. The Renegade Knights Trail leads to the Novograd region. They took control of a nearby Fistech manufactory upon a manufact yeah, manufactory upon arrival. Possibly this is what brought them to the region. Have occupied prime observation position. Dropbox has been prepared in case of unforeseen complications. The agent sent to track us down will find it in the pond visible from the observation tower near the village of Morin. Regarding the knights, here a big risk might reap big rewards. We suggest offering them imperial gold for their services. With Radovid having dispersed their order, the knights prowl the lands like common bandits, scavenging for their upkeep. And they now hate HRM Radovid, oh, his royal majesty Radovid, with a violent pas passion. I mean, yeah. <laughs> 
they'd gladly take our coin and even more gladly destabilize the Redanian army's rear guard. This they'd do far better than any partisans worth considering. Agent Shinetop is still out on his mission. No word from him for several days, waiting for ins further instructions. Postscript written in blood, wait in hell, Nilfgaardian whore, and your next Agent Shinetop. Tinker Hunter. <laughs> Tinker Hunter, Soldier Spy. Tinker Taylor, Soldier Spy. I like it. I approve. So the pond visible from this air. That seems like a long ways away. Moldavi residents. Ooh. Like Moldavia or something. Something very vampire like, you know? We've been there before. Was that DLC area? That was a DLC area, because I picked up the... I picked up a quest to go there. Leave me be. Okay, sir. You're welcome for, you know, liberating your town. Okay, so was there a fast travel point here? That would be extremely convenient. No, but there's one by the isolated hut. Which is now not so isolated. Davi residence. I need to read it. Um. Despite its ideal location and beautiful surroundings, this residence has been tossed from owner to owner like a hot potato, and for some unknown reason, suffers from a bad reputation. I remember I came here and cleared out the monsters in like the caves below. Okay, there aren't people. Are there people inside? But he was gonna like resell it again or something, right? So why does it look like it's lit from the Got inside? Some work. Well, oh, look at all the kitties. Oh, this way, this way. Find the spy stash using my witcher senses. But what about the other spy? I wonder where he is. I'm, there you go, Geralt. Canadian saddlebags. How much are those? 100. I think I already have them. I do. Oh, my Ophiri. It was Ophiri stock, stock saddle. I wonder if they have Ophiri saddlebags. Hmm. Okay, so let's head back up to, I guess, Bowden. Let's get my quest active again. Yeah, that one just needs to be turned in as well. So hopefully I can finish the sections, these, this exploration and this part of this quest. I don't know what section's coming from. Today, and then maybe I can turn in those quests tomorrow and then maybe go back on the main quest. It's a lot of maybes. <laughs> Bowdoin was founded by the writ of King Herbert the Quarrelsome. Unfortunately, the king was roaring drunk when they asked him to indicate on the map where to build a new settlement and slammed his finger down the middle of a swamp. <laughs> Those forced to settle there soon abandoned the unpleasant bog. Their empty dwellings became shelter for vagabonds and ba bandits. Well, that explains a lot. It's like the swamps where the ladies are at. 
well, I guess Lady now is just, there's just one left, right? Because Siri eventually <laughs> killed him. Good Lord, that was an epic bet. That was, that, I think that was my least favorite fight of all of them so far, has been that one. The one with Siri and the ladies. Partially because I just felt so not comfortable with Siri's specials. Because I had just like figured it out like the day before, maybe, or two days before. Maybe three. Oh, another abandoned site. Yay. Baron Garth. There, Roach. Okay. I see wraiths. Okay, hang on. Let's get out some Spectre oil because they're always bothering me. All right, I think I'm about as ready as I can be. Spatial air is starting to look a little bit better. I, I approve so far. But abandoned site. Hang on. We gotta go investigate this. Oh, and it's an herbalist too. Okay. Because I have stuff to loot up here too. Smile fair as spring as towards him he draws you. His tongue sharp and silvery as he implores you. Silver, silver tongue. I'm telling you, it's all about what's his face. Odim, right? Gunter Odim. There we go. See? <laughs> it only took like two weeks for me to finally start remembering people's names. <laughs> Where is this herbalist? Hello, herbalist. Got anything good for me? What? <laughs> Farewell. No, the answer is no. He does not have anything super interesting. Um, I don't feel like looting. Well, let's loot the chest. Tales of Baron Garth. Ooh. There was once a young woman named Marlene and a young man named Bartholomew. Bartholomew was so handsome, no maid could tear her eyes off him. Every maid in the village, from the fairest to the plainest, yearned to win his favor. Marlene, too, was struck by his beauty and soon fell in love with him as a love as a love as deep as only a first love can be. This feeling was so overwhelming, Marlene realized she could never live without Bartholomew. Yet it was her misfortune that Bar that that by then Bartholomew already had a wife and a young son. Marlene refused to give in to this misfortune, however, and worked long and hard to convince Bartholomew that she was his one true love. In the end, she succeeded, for women possess the gift of persuasion, and many a man has succumbed to their entreaties. Bartholomew's wife refused to accept his change of heart, but Marlene found a way to deal with that as well. Marlene convinced Bartholomew he must get rid of his wife once and for all, and so he chopped off her head. Everything would have ended well with the young lovers living happily ever after had not the crime been witnessed by Bartholomew's five-year-old son. Marlene saw no other solution than to convince Bartholomew, by now her rightful husband, to dispose of the child like his mother and bury his body next to hers so that they might be together for all eternity. Yet this time Bartholomew put his foot down and refused to do what Marlene asked of him. It's one thing to kill my wife. Oh yeah, it's totally fine to kill my wife, the mother of my child. But to kill my child, the fruit of my loins, he said. He only changed his mind when the lad began to speak loudly and frequently about what he'd seen. And though Bartholomew could never raise his hand against his firstborn son, he found another way to deal with the problem. While the boy slept, he snuck into his room, lifted him up, and set him in a coffin. 
which he then buried under the apple trees in the yard. After that day, strange things began occurring in the area where the couple lived. The trees lost their leaves and stopped bearing fruit. Folk dwelling nearby were hounded by evil dreams. One by one, they fled their homes and farmsteads until only Marlene and Bartholomew were left. One day, Marlene dreamt the boy had awoken in his casket under the apple trees and began to cry. She yearned to have a child of her own, and such dreams troubled her greatly. She thus took a spade and dug up the coffin. Inside, she found the child's body, but its arms or, but its arms or legs were missing. Like, she's not sure? Or is it arms and legs? She thought the poor lad must have gnawed them off from wild hunger before he died. Oh, God. The sight of the child's mangled torso so terrified Marlene, she reburied the coffin at once and never said a word about it to her husband. They lived together a great many years afterwards, but theirs was not a good life Bartholomew had changed. He slowly stopped cherishing Marlene and then stopped speaking. He hanged himself on the night of the summer solstice, leaving his wife alone with her dreams. Before she died, Marlene dug up the child's coffin one more time. No one knows where she went and what she did with it. Their lands have lain deserted ever since. No plants will grow there and no birds will sing. William and Jacob G. Well, that was a horrible story. I'm so glad I read it. Like, oh, I don't want to hurt my kid. I'll just bury him alive. What, what, you? Is this an outhouse? It's locked. <laughs> Well, there's that. All the beehives. They seem to be doing well now. Is it because I got rid of all the wraiths? That was a horrible. That was a horrible story. That was a horrible. What a horrible person. All, both of them. Like, ugh. Okay, let's go to this first area here and try to acquire a hunk of jade. Here we go. Not much jade here. Need to keep looking. But there's some. You could. Uh, it's fine. Whatever. I mean, you could loot some of it. There is conveniently a path here, which is very convenient. <laughs> Is the question mark up top or inside though? Because I feel like I hear insectoids. A hidden treasure. Well, let's. Oh no, it is all inside. Oh gosh, it's gonna be the creepy spider things, right? Ugh. It is. Oh gosh, I hate spiders so much. Like so, so, so much. I don't know why I'm going there. Let's let insectoid oil is the one I want. Oh, I'm totally getting, I'm, I'm very much going to have mods in the next game. Fast travel from anywhere is gonna definitely be one of them. The auto oiling your sword is definitely gonna be one of them. Do you know, just quality of life improvements. Hi. And I hear more of them. <laughs> Yuck. Okay, well, let's see what happened to this poor, poor guy here. Bent key and yellowed letter. 
Mates, if you're reading this letter, it means you're a free man. New Drakenborg could never break you. I feel damned bad. It was you they fingered back then. Fate's a bitch at times, ain't she? But you're a made man now. <laughs> Again, are we the Godfather or something? <laughs> I hid your part of the loot in the cave that wouldn't let us play in, that they wouldn't let us play in when we were young. Was full of them massive spiders then, but not a sign of the critters now. <laughs> Hunters claim they've migrated elsewhere, not enough to eat here, so they won't be coming back anytime soon. So it's safe, but the bad memories do a great job of keeping nosy hayseeds, making it the ideal spot for loot. The chest is buried in the second part of the cavern. Get it, and you'll be a rich man, and can drink and wench till the end of your days. See you later. You know where. We'll bathe in wine and live in luxury. The Drakenborg Redemption. Search the cave with my witcher senses. Well, I'm gonna search it anyway for Jade, so sure. Jade right here, let's look. Jade, now to extract some. Uh, quickly, there's a spider coming. It's right over there, Geralt. You must, must move faster. Nice. There's a part of the cave over there, but let's go this way. Very slowly, it seems. of his body when it falls. Ugh. I see you, spider. I see you. <laughs> this one looks even bigger than the others. Is it just because I'm so close? No, it looks bigger than the others. Ugh. Here we go. Florence. I need to go back to Novigrad and trade in quite a bit of money now, because I've got, yeah, quite a bit of money now that I need to exchange for actual usable money. Okay, well, does that mean take the hunk of jade to the Ophiri rune, right? Well, that went a whole lot easier than I expected it to. But now we have question marks to finish exploring. Over here, and then there's a beastie over there I gotta take care of. Yeah, I remember exploring up the coastline here and making it here and having a like a level 30 plus beastie when I was in my low 20s. And then trying to run this way to get to literally anywhere <laughs> with a travel point. And that's when I ran into Saracen Grange, so. Let's get out of here. Can I blast my way through? No, I can't. We're going to have to go a long way. But I like the little the low pieces hanging from up top. It's no doubt disgusting and, you know, bug related, but it's pretty. And I'll just ignore the gross part of it. I hear more beasties, but I don't know where they actually are. Blood rot pit? Ugh. All 
Okay, so back up in this direction, there should be... Oh, it's an Andrigo worker, that's what I'm hearing. Something resembling a road if I keep going in this direction. While it's trying to avoid any and all beasts to fight. I mean, I could fight them, but whatever. <laughs> They're just gonna respawn, right? <laughs> Here's the road. Maybe? There we go. Now what's over here? It looks like another lookout place. Guarded treasure. What is that? Oh, it's a bear. The Buckholt Hills have long been famed for the wealth of animals dwelling there. Whoops. There we go. Which is why the owner of the nearby Saracen Grange once had a hunter's cottage built there to ensure the daily provision of fresh game. It's pretty smart. Exit. There we go. Let's put away the sword. Carol die rolling down the stairs. Enhance Carol's saddle and Vered Brigade Sword. So uh what what is it what did it call what they called again? Hunter's cottage and the hunter was killed by a bear. I feel like that's some sort of irony right there, right? Perhaps. great view though. I mean it's hard to tell because it's well it's overcast and low dark at night. Safe. Okay next one is Saracen Grange. So Lord Antara Saracen moved his wife and a smattering of comely daughters here from far off Nazare on his medic's recommendations. The leech proclaimed with absolute certainty that if you wish to sire a son, it must be in the gust fields. While waiting to produce a male heir, the Saracens took to wine cultivation and soon their grange became renowned from Nazar to Skellige. Well, I am gonna run down here just in case there is anything and we'll make our way into the grange and then up over into this area. Just in case there's a quest. I feel like they're always near-ish. Oh, is that Novigrad off in the distance? It is, right? Oh, that's really pretty. You can see the tower. Oh, that's lovely. Um, oh, it looks like a, it's just a tree. <laughs> it wasn't a beast, it was just a tree. Oh, that's so beautiful. Live out in the country and you have that gorgeous view of the city. Wow, look at all the vineyards. That is so nice. Well, let's go see what's up here. Just a dog. Hello, puppy. Is there anyone up here? You 
guy don't share bed. <laughs> huh. For a rich guy, that's an awful tiny house. Gotta say. I would have expected, you know, maybe not Von Everick style estate, but something much larger than that. I mean, come on, like, we've got to get to go into that. I kind of can't wait to go in there. <laughs> That's what I'm guessing. With Necker's monster nest. That's what I would I would say. Although we have had a lot of guarded treasure today and yesterday. Monster nest, I was right. Necker's surface here. Dig their way out. Yep. Come on. Go faster. Like, don't get stuck up in the air. Okay. That one's done. We're moving right, right along today. I'm, I'm quite pleased. Okay, so let's head over to that one and then over here. Guessing maybe place of power? Perhaps? Probably more buried treasure though, knowing my luck. People. Lots of people. Ugh, more eternal fire people. You'll never learn. Help! These custard spells! It shall be over soon. Ah. Multiple arrow people. There he is, there he is, there he is. Ah. I don't, but you know. Gosh, Harold, let's uh. Here we go, we go. I'm coming. Kill you two, and then we'll take care of the guy with the shield. There we go. I always want to say, I'm like, I feel like I'm getting better. <laughs> Forever. Wild rose de dethorned. That's the achievement that just happened. I'm guessing I've killed all of the Flaming Rose bandit camps and I got an achievement for it. Ooh, Quartermaster's report from the 25th of the current month. Hunting party went into the nearby woods today. Game there a plenty. Killed 12 does, 8 stags, 32 hares, and 7 boars. Meat will be cleaned, salted, and set to dry in the sun. Hides will be taken to the camp by Zwetzer's castle. Before long, we'll beat the bush, shoot some fowl. Hunters have spied pheasant, wild duck, and partridge in the area. Plenty of everything, really, so hunger shan't be a problem this winter. 
important. Some local hunter wandered into the camp introducing himself as Gable Mattis, sold us a bear hide, top quality, and promised to return with another. Soon as he does, we'll bind him in fetters and burn his heels because there's something damned fishy about him? Lieutenant Von Hurst. I mean, you know, you're surviving in the wilderness, basically, because you've been expelled and you don't want to work for a yeah. No one, No one can blame you for that. You're still probably a bunch of racist, you know, extremists, but we'll ignore that for now. But, like, you couldn't just live and let live and, and try to survive. Instead, like, somebody offers to come and sell you something and you're like, okay, he must be evil. <laughs> I just... I mean... Don't be bad guys. It's just that simple. Be, be nice people. You know. I didn't side with Siegfried in Witcher 1, but I did feel bad about it a little bit. But then again, neither Siegfried nor... Was it Yavin? Yavin were the... I don't know. Neither of them seemed to be the, the, the quote, correct choice. Both of them were morally great, which I genuinely appreciated. Anyway, I'm off on a whole other tangent. So I've got one more place to go and investigate that's been on my to-do list for a very long time. It's right by Novigrad. Oh, it's so pretty. I mean, look at that. So beautiful, right? How you like that silver? I guess it's okay. <laughs> I don't think he likes it particularly much. So where am- what is it over here? I think it was a treasure. Guarded treasure, right? Hidden treasure. Maybe, maybe. went a whole lot better than the first time I came over here. <laughs> Grant, I do think I have, um, well, I have leveling, uh, uh, level upscaling on now. I didn't then, and it was still, like, not good at all. Okay, so what is over here that is hidden? Ooh. attached to me? Okay. Letter written in blood. Oh my. Brethren, I write you now in my own blood so you may now so that you may know what fate befell me, perhaps? Following M's orders, I traveled to Novigrad to resupply and sell our latest batch of Fistec. I left the men in my command on our boat along with the goods and the coin while I went to the hut on the beach to await WJ's men. When they arrived, it was well after dark and one of them bore a linen sack on his back. The sack did not contain the promised Novigrad crowns. Instead, it held the heads of my men. The scoundrels demanded to know where the Fistech was, but I only told them about the case on the ship, which they will never open without the key. My choice 
to slip this into my arse shortly before they caught me proved wise, for they searched everywhere else. Yuck. Let's just have a yuck moment. Though they interrogated me harshly, I withheld the truth. Instead, I insisted one of the men they murdered on the ship was carrying the key and my role was merely to negotiate. They wanted to kill me at once, but their captain had another idea at the last minute. They locked me in this becursed cage to wither and die slowly from hunger and thirst. The second day of my captivity, I heard the screams of my captors. I know not whether I saw true or visions, but it seemed drowners had emerged from the water and were devouring the horses alive. Yet the the problem remains that they, the Horsens, not the Drowners, have so securely locked me in I see no means of escape. I have sat here six days now. I stopped feeling hunger after the third, my guts having turned in on themselves. I Now I dream only of drink. I'd give all the gold in the world for a sip of water. It could be rank and full of larva, and still I would guzzle it greedily. I drank my own urine for the first time a few, for the first few days, but I no longer produce any. I have nothing left and not even hope. The last thing keeping me sane is the task of writing this letter to you. Farewell, Ansel. That's... horrible. So find the sunken ship using your Witcher senses. The sword, famine, and perfidy. Oh, I haven't been reading the quest updates for these. I need to... I need to do that. I feel like I've been skipping those for treasure hunting quests. And they may actually have something, I don't know, useful or informative. Oh my, that is a, that is a ways away. Well, how about this? I'm gonna hop on the boat here and sail it over there and meet you as I get closer. Okay, so here we are, let me, Hop on some killer whale, hop in the water. Down we go, I see the treasure already. Down, Geralt, down, Geralt. Okay, I guess I need to re-equip my crossbow. took off some of my I traded out some of my crossbow perks for actual sword perks and now it takes me multiple shots it seems like to to do things okay sword famine and perfidy per, 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 well whatever it's fine all right let's hop back on the boat and then I'll go through my quest log and look for some of these treasure quests all right, well, Tinker Hunter Soldier Spy. So the quest text for that one says, the nature of Geralt's trade means finding corpses is a normal part of a day's work. This time the body found, was found atop an observation tower near the village of Morin. Upon closer inspection, Geralt found the man's throat had been slit and had some highly interesting papers in his pockets. The letter revealed the man had been a Nilfgaardian spy disguised as a tinker named Krister. He had been following the movements of knights from the disbanded order. It seems Krister had not exercised due caution, for his spy career had been cut short by a slash of a renegade knight's blade. The most interesting information in the letter, however, concerned the location of the considerable staff of coin Nilfgaard had devoted to his spying operation. Geralt was able to find the, st the spy's stash, which he then eagerly emptied of its contents. Not the noblest of actions, perhaps, but was it not better the coin went to the witcher's pouch and not the grubby paws of the Order's bandits? I think so. So the next one was the Drakenberg Redemption. While traveling near Novigrad, Geralt happened across the body of an unfortunate wretch who had stumbled into a cave full of arachnomorphs. In his pockets was a yellowed letter. The letter was from a thief informing his partner about where he had hidden their takings. To their great misfortune, the damp cave he had chosen was home to monstrous spiders who made the treasure's hiding spot the very heart of the, their lair. The letter told the truth. Gerald found the hidden treasure and kept a 100% finder's fee for himself. And then the secret life of Count Ramilly. 
Despite numerous warnings, Geralt ventured deep into the dead white wood where he found the ruins of Castle Arnsgrown. I think I read that one. That one's quite old. Surprise Inheritance. That one's quite old. The Sword, Famine, and Perfidy. In a certain per... per Perfidy? I think it's Perfidy. It, it doesn't matter. <laughs> in a certain cellar located near a nest of drowners, Geralt found a body quite curiously. The deceased had not been torn apart by the monsters, but seems to have died of thirst, having been barricaded in the cellar by some third party. Near the body, Geralt found a key and some notes, all of which he took with him. From the notes, Geralt learned about a treasure hidden in a locked chest on a ship. He suspected the key to that chest was the very one he had found by the body. Geralt had found his fair share of hidden treasure before, so he found the chest without too much difficulty and took its contents for himself. And I think that's actually it. So this is where I'm going to pause for today. Tomorrow, I am going to most likely meet you all the way back over here in the upper mill to turn in both enchanting quality has its price and from Ophiri's distant shore. I have, to, I have, I think this is where I'm going to get, I think it's Witcher gear. I can't be too sure. I could be wrong, but either way, we're going to turn those quests in, see what happens next. Like I said, I'm not going to pay some ridiculous fee for enchanting uh, this time around. I figure I can do that in my next playthrough. I'm I don't know, I just feel like I've mismanaged my funds quite a bit and haven't, haven't uh, pushed for as much money as I could, but I'll, I'll worry about that in the next playthrough. I feel like that's something fair enough to do. So that's my plan and we'll, we'll go from there. So as always, thank you so very much for watching. Please do keep yourselves safe and I will see you again tomorrow with another new Witcher 3 video.